In the early days of figure skating, jumps with even one rotation could delight an audience. But today, quads, jumps with four rotations, are almost expected in high-level men's skating routines. And I say men's skating routines because so far only one woman has landed one of these epic jumps in competition. So that got me wondering, how do skaters add rotations to their jumps? My guess was that they trained to jump higher, giving themselves more time in the air to spin. But according to Dr. Jim Richards, a professor of biomechanics at the University of Delaware, that might not be the case. He said training to jump higher can be helpful, but if you're already jumping 18 or 20 inches and still can't do a quad, it might not be the best strategy. The problem is if you have skaters who are now training to jump higher, 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 you're also building up body mass. In skating, it pays to be slender, and the reason comes down to physics. Conservation of angular momentum governs how many rotations a skater can do during a single jump. Basically, spinning objects want to keep spinning until they're acted on by some outside force. When a skater pushes off the ice for a jump, he or she is generating their angular momentum. Once they've taken off, it's etched in stone. So the angular momentum doesn't change when they're in the air. They have all the energy they're ever gonna have, and now it's a matter of how efficiently can I use that energy. Angular momentum is calculated like this. Angular velocity means how fast an object is spinning, and moment of inertia is a fancy term for how spread out the object's mass is around the axis of rotation. So since the skater's angular momentum stays the same, if they can pull their body parts in and decrease their moment of inertia, their rotations per minute will go up. You can test this out yourself at home. Sit in a swivel chair and hold a book in each hand. Have a buddy spin you around, and while you're spinning, pull your arms in. You'll notice that you start to spin faster. Not as fast as a figure skater, though. In order to land a quad, a skater's peak rotation speed has to be around 440 to 450 rotations per minute. Richards and his colleagues help skaters safely add rotations to their jumps by placing sensors on the athletes while they jump to capture their movements. Then they use computer simulations to show them when they need to bring their arms in and straighten up to decrease their moment of inertia. So we took all of that mathematics and boiled it down to an animated picture on the computer screen. So we literally show them what their body will look like when they're going to be in this position. And when they get in that position, we show them what will happen to them. But even with all the fancy technology and training, without the appropriate build, you still may not be able to make the jump. The ideal skater should look like Popeye. Okay, really thin middle, big forearms because now they got all that mass out there and they can pull it all in. Moral of the story, eat your spinach and pull your arms in. Eat your in. spinach, pull your arms in. So what's the next big thing in figure skating? Could we see five rotations in the future? I don't think we'll see a quint from anybody but I'm not convinced we won't see a quad from a female. I'm rooting for it. <laughs> I'll bet you are.